All right, today we are gonna be using Blender a little bit differently, where instead of making things inside of Blender, 3D, whatever, we're actually gonna be taking actual footage, throwing it into Blender and starting there and manipulating it similar to the way you would use After Effects or Photoshop. So let's talk about what we're gonna be doing here. The first thing I'm gonna be showing you is how we can use procedural textures to distort and give footage a really weird looking look. In After Effects, we would call that displacement. Displacement's different in 3D, but here we're gonna be manipulating our footage. After that, I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use geometry nodes and the footage is controlling the geometry and almost the geometry recreates the footage using dark and light values. It's really cool. And then we're gonna combine those two effects into one big effect, kind of like layering them and we're gonna have something really cool like this. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, before we dive into that, there's only a few more days left on my Black Friday sale. So if you wanna get my motion graphics course, my geometry notes course, my shading course, or real-time materials, 50% off, use the code D350. The link is in the description. With that being said, let's dive into this. All right, let's start out and create the video distortion first. So you'll just go ahead, get a plane, and then over here, Go ahead and do 16 by nine on your size. That is pretty much, uh, unless your, your video is square, then just do like one by one. Um, but you want the plane to be the proper aspect ratio of the video you're putting on it. And also know how many frames long your video is. In my case, mine is 749 frames. So we can head over to shading and then I'm gonna get a new material. And then with the Node Wrangler add-on, I'm gonna hit Control T I'm gonna go ahead and open up my video. So my video is gonna be placed here and I'm gonna go ahead with the image texture and just straight up bypass the principle and plug the video right into the output. So now that we're here, we have the video and it's not gonna play until we click these two settings here and tell it 749 frames. And then I'm gonna give myself right over here 749 frames. And now we have our video playing like it's supposed to be, really fun. Now we can start having some fun and uh, distorting it. So what you'll do is right here by the texture coordinate, this is called the vector line, start just throwing stuff on here. You can also even throw image textures on here. So if you have a grunge texture or whatever, you can plop it there, any texture goes. So I'm gonna go and put a Voronoi texture on here and then I'm gonna get a mix color node, very important, so that we have the ability to entirely bypass the uh, texture itself, because if we bring it over here to the right, it's as if this Voronoi texture doesn't exist. And so the more we bring it to the left, the more of that Voronoi effect we are applying to this video. And then over here in the mapping, you can go ahead and bring that video back over in case it's starting to distort it to the left or the right or up and down, um, you know, giving you a little bit more control. But we have it, here it is. It is doing its thing. If I switch my Voronoi texture over to 4D, I can now, animate my Voronoi texture. And what it essentially is doing is we're using this color output right here. It is essentially taking the video and moving it based on the value of the color that it is essentially touching. So if I go ahead and I look at it, all these are different colors, but it's going to be looking at the value of it. As far as I'm aware, it's the value. It's gonna take that value and values are numbers, our strengths. And so it's t telling it, move it, based on how dark or light the value of that image is. And then we can, you know, goof with it from there. And so you can give it maybe like very small amount of the effect or a larger effect. And then what I can do, notice how this is a very hard edge. I wanna soften that up. So we can go here and switch it over to smooth F1, bring my smoothness back to zero and we can just incorporate a little bit. And so it's now gonna be distorting it more and I think it just gives it a nicer, more organic look. And then we can just bring it up something like this. And now we have a really, really cool looking effect. And you don't have to just use the Voronoi texture. You can quite literally use any texture. So the most classic uh, look would definitely be a noise texture. And so we'll just plug that here. And um, you can see, all right, cool. We are here and we can do some stuff like this and then maybe bring my detail down and then we can make it you know, distort even more. And then you can do that. And then what we can also do is throw in a color ramp to 
basically kill the effect at different points. And so you can maybe uh, go more toward like an ease to smooth out that look, um, but you can actually sort of just have the effect on only certain portions of our scene. So you can have a lot of fun, a lot of control over this, and then you can just straight up render that out. So now that we're done, what you can do is just say, hey, set up a camera. I'll do that. And then I'll just get it into my view and then render that out, render out that animation. And then when you're done, we, we can come back. And now let's do the next effect, which is using geometry nodes to control. I mean, I'm using footage to control geometry nodes and having a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bypass all these effects, go back to the original, and I'm gonna import my new video. So I know my new video is 450 frames. This, I went ahead and animated the uh, W of the Voronoi to slowly change while my video is playing. And so this is great. So what I'm gonna do now is get a new plane. So let's just call him video here in the outliner. Let's go ahead and get a new plane and then we'll just bring it ever so slightly above my scene and I'm gonna call him Geo. Now let's head to geometry nodes. I'm gonna to go to my camera view and let's create something new here. So let's get a grid in geometry nodes, plug that into geometry. We can delete the input. And again, do this 16 by nine. And then I'm just gonna manually, I'm gonna go here into the wireframe view and manually position him right on top. It's not an exact science. If you're into exact science, you can figure that out. Um, and then we'll go back to the wireframe on the vertices, of course, do 16 by nine. That's just to make sure that our vertices are um, square. And then you can go ahead and add a subdivide mesh node. And then no matter how much you subdivide it, that will remain uh, a perfect square. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and create this effect and show you how video can be shown in geometry. I think it's really cool. So we need to add some objects on top of all of the vertices that we just created. And so that's gonna be a instance on points node. And then go ahead and put any object you want. You can use a sphere, you can use a, just a regular square plane. I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, plus icon, a plus symbol. All right, so here is the object that I created. Again, you can use any object you want. You can use a logo even. Uh, so I'm gonna give myself a new material on our object and I'm gonna switch it over to an emission material and give it a nice red, almost orange um, material and maybe give it a strength of five for now. So let's go back to geometry notes. So click on the geo object. Let's make sure that he is slightly above the other object. Well, you can't see it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and rename my object to plus. We'll go back to geo and drag the object into your geometry nodes workspace and plug geometry into instance. So I'm gonna turn on my outline, my cavity, and my shadow. So now we have all of our objects here doing what they do. And so we're gonna get a map range just so we can control the scale of things. And so if I bring my max down, we now have a bunch of these little pluses. I'm gonna bring my level down to maybe two. So there we go, we have our plus symbols doing what they like to do. And now we can use an image to drive the scale of these objects. So we're gonna get a image texture and we'll plug color into value. Let's open up our video. So same video that's playing on the video behind it, choose that same one, otherwise it's not going to line up. So if you'll notice there's a repeating pattern, it's tiling the video a bunch. So we have to create a fun little kind of annoying mapping system to make sure that this video perfectly maps in our geometry node setup. So I'm gonna bring my grid right about over here and let's go ahead and build that. First thing we're gonna to need to get is a bounding box node and we'll plug mesh into geometry and we need to go ahead and handle this min and max outputs. So we're gonna get a vector math node and of course for vector math to work in geometry nodes, you're going to always need to get a position node. So what we need to do is subtract the minimum and the maximum here and then he, now that we have this data being handled, we need to get the position and this data into a new vector math node. 
So I'll just go ahead and duplicate him, set him over to divide, plug this little system, the bounding box and the position, and now we're ready to get going. So now he is handling all of this information. We need to get another vector math node, set him over to subtract, and we can plug him here. And then I figured out on the scale needs to be 0.5, plug him into vector. Now it's working properly. It's just upside down every time. I don't know why it's upside down, but all we need to do is get a vector rotate and set it to 180 degrees. Now this video behind it is 450 frames. My timeline needs to also indicate those 450 frames. And if I go here on the subdivide mesh and I up the subdivide mesh, you'll see these plus icons are lining up with our video and notice the larger plus icons are larger on the brighter portions of the video. So that's the idea, it's using value, the lighter values scale up your plus icons, lower values bring them down. In my case, I wanna bring them down to just being uh, completely gone. So let's see, it needs to be probably the from max. The from minimum just needs to be crunched up quite a bit and then you can play with your from max. So I'm gonna bring my level down to like three maybe, so that our plus icons are showing up in the brightest portions of our video. And then what we can do is get a scene time um, node and just plug frame into frame. So now it's just going to be playing properly throughout the extent of our video. And so as you can see, you have this really cool scene. So let's get this to look cool by adding some glow. So what we'll do is we'll just render one image and then we'll head into our compositing and get something to glow here. So I'm gonna get a viewer node, plug it here. I'm gonna crunch these two together and we're gonna get a glare node. We'll put, put this onto bloom and now the bloom is just far too high at the moment. Bring your bloom to something like that and then we'll get an, another glare node and then we'll bring that fade up a little bit, bring up your color mod, and then you can bring that mix down till you think it's kind of a, you know, the appropriate look for your scene. Now, in turn, now let's go back to geometry nodes and you can hit this drop down and turn on uh, compositor to always so you can see how it looks. In terms of color science, I mean, color space, bring uh, your color management to AGX. I found that to look the best for making it kind of look like these guys you know, belong here. So back in geometry nodes, I'm gonna bring my from minimum a little bit higher. I'm gonna bring my max down and maybe bring my subdivide level down to like, nah, I think level three works good. And then what you can do is to me, I don't like it looking like a, a whole grid. So what I'm gonna do is get a delete. I'm gonna get a delete geometry node, specifically tell it to delete instances. We're gonna get a random value node, set it over to Boolean. And what that'll do is just allow us to randomly delete some of these instances. So it just looks a little bit more organic while it's flying through. So it's not this huge grid. And then I can just go ahead and make my objects a little brighter to make it look awesome. And now we're done. We are now done with this effect. And you can have a lot of fun and it's not gonna entirely play real time because it is sort of processing the video through the geometry as we're looking at it. But this is the whole effect that we are creating and it looks super cool. I'm totally in love with it. Just thinking about Blender in a way of how can we add effects on top of video. Um, does it take longer than After Effects? Sometimes yeah, sometimes no. Um, it does give you different options. So if you are an After Effects user and you're maybe looking for a different creative outlet for video effects, definitely try to look at Blender as a way of doing that. So with that being said, that's it. That's the effect. There's really so many different effects in Blender that you can do with thinking about Blender as After Effects type situations. Um, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out any of my courses or my real-time materials plugin. You can get it 50% off right now until the end of the month using the code D350. Uh, that's linked in the bio. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.